Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 5, Part 1. We will continue talking about feature detectors. In the last lecture, we talked about Harris Corner Detector. It is one of the many types of uh, uh, feature detectors. Uh, let's continue then in that direction. Um, in this fifth lecture, we ma majoritarily we will cover three main issues. Uh, as we saw in the last lecture, that there was an issue of uh, choosing the right scale because we saw how Harris corner detector is uh, co uh, is not covariant to scale, and therefore, uh, in order to find uh, the same corner in a scaled version of a different image, we need to adopt different techniques, and we are going to look into them in this part of the lecture. Uh, in the next part, we will also talk about a specific scale invariant image descriptor, which is uh, which uh, gained a lot of popularity and one of the strongest uh, feature detector uh, of its time. And then we will also do some feature matching. So let's uh, take an overview of what we have uh, looked into so far. In local features, we have seen mainly we have studied about uh, feature detector called Harris corner detector. Uh, we also saw the properties and the, um, the features a uh, feature detector uh, is required to have. And uh, in the next uh, following lecture, we will also look at into uh, description and matching. But for now, we continue with uh, feature detectors. We look into uh, scale invariant feature detectors to be specific. So how can uh, so the question comes to the mind and uh, I want to pose it to you is how can a scale of a feature point be modeled? How do we how do we recognize that when we are using a particular uh, modeling technique or an algorithm, how does it take into account the different scales uh, a particular feature uh, can have in multiple images? So let's say you are taking a, a, a photograph of, a, of an object and then you are going uh, moving a little and or maybe zooming in and then taking the same image of the same object but in a scaled or a zoomed in version and then you want to detect features at different scales so uh, scales uh, pose the first uh, interesting problem for the current uh, uh, analysis of our feature detectors right so with harris corner detector we had not uh, we saw that it is a uh, scale uh, it is not scale uh, uh, covariant and therefore we look into uh, automatic scale selection techniques. So for example in this case uh, on the left we have an image um, and this this is a feature point here and a scale version of the same image is shown here with the same feature point. Uh, we need to find basically a function which can map these fe two feature points uh, in these two different sets of images. Uh, how do we find f? So what kind of function or a um, mapping function that we are um, or a response function that we are looking into that gives us this uh, capability. Uh, basically what we need is uh, when we look at a response of the function f, uh, it looks like this in on the left hand side of the image and on the scale version we see that it is like this. Um, so it is not clear which part of the response corresponds uh, to both the images. So we don't know, we are not sure on which feature is the is the response um, uh, matching right so on the x-axis axis here we have different scales uh, on and on which the uh, f function f is applied uh, same in in both the cases but uh, we have no easy way of knowing where the uh, features uh, match um, however but we know in a way that when the when we are using different scales, uh, intuitively we know that uh, when the function has the high peak, that is where the matching happens or that is where the features are uh, located. The function responses are similar. And so basically we want to find these, these locations in uh, different scales of the same function. That can, that can, um, uh, that can help us detect this uh, particular scale of this function as well as which feature points are matched across images. Um, 
So what could be a very good useful uh, uh, signature of this function? So this is these are simple. Um, again, we go back to uh, Gaussians as we saw earlier as well. Uh, the single Gaussian, the response is like this. The first derivative is like this, and the second derivative, also called Laplacian of Gaussian, is uh, given uh, in this manner, which is shown here. Uh, we take up a function f, which is a, a Gaussian function with uh, different scales and their responses in different scales is uh, shown in this graph basically when you increase the scale size or when you increase the um, variance of this gaussian kernel uh, the responses are uh, different in the scales and uh, when you see that the, you increase the scale space the responses are delayed as well uh, basically uh, they have a bigger window size for the response um yeah so next see let's see dif in different scales so let's say you have an input image on the left here and you apply this uh, gaussian um, function with different scales on the image and then you, you are able to generate all these uh, examples and in this case uh, what you do is uh, you take the maxima across all this uh, output and you find uh, your uh, output features so um, uh, at, at every different scale you apply um, Gaussian of different uh, um, variances and then when you generate the feature maps of uh, uh, as an output of this convolutions uh, you take the maxima of uh, each which each uh, response uh, across different um, responses. Uh, another alternative approach could be that we can uh, approximate the Laplacian of Gaussian with a difference of Gaussian. So what basically it means is you take two different Gaussians of uh, varying uh, variance. So the green one here has a higher uh, standard variance. It's I think around 5. Um, whereas red has uh, is around 3. And when you take a difference of this, you get a, a profile which... Um, is a difference of Gaussian but it is an approximation of Laplacian of Gaussian which we saw earlier in this uh, example here. So it looks similar to this and we have taken an uh, approximation to this. What is the advantage of doing this is uh, that you can have uh, uh, the image, you can blur them with two different Gaussian kernels and when you take a difference of those images basically you will generate um, an output which could have been generated by applying directly the Laplacian of Gaussian. Um, an advantage of this is seen here. So when you are doing, uh, when we are finding the, uh, mm, when we are blurring the uh, the image with different kernel sizes, and we take the differences, we are able to generate um, the uh, difference of Gaussian uh, output for each uh, scale. So uh, the more, the bigger the size. So uh, the first attempt when you do the um, uh, difference between the first scale and then you increase the scale successively and then you just reuse the previously convolved uh, output uh, feature and then uh, use it again and again and this gives uh, uh, saves a lot of memory and this is how you um, uh, save computations and you are able to generate the same uh, features uh, at different scales. And these are the basically the results. So uh, larger circles basically represent the feature detected or the features detected uh, where the maxima of the particular um, kernel was uh, particular image was um, uh, present. So here, for example, is a specific case where uh, you see that there is an eye here and there is a smaller scale which is able to detect the, like the corner of the eye, whereas uh, there is a smaller, uh, uh, slightly bigger um, circle which is able to detect a feature point in a um, larger scale, basically. Um, so when you applied the responses across different um, re uh, different responses uh, or the different kernels in uh, different sized kernels, you take the maximum of a particular scale and then. Um, you're, you're printing the, that circle with that particular scale here. Um, scale and the variance or the um, standard deviation of the Gaussian kernel used is uh, similar. So instead of saying that we are actually zooming the image and applying 
the same convolutional um, or applying the same Gaussian blur. Instead, we say that we apply um, Gaussian blur with the increasing size of the kernels and this increasing size basically represents the different scales at which um, the features are uh, uh, being extracted. This is another method or a state of the art, another state of the art which uh, the, has the advantage that it is not um, um, it is not exactly for uh, corners. It uh, detects the regions which are uh, which are interesting points or the featured regions. Basically, if you want to call them like that, uh, it's called maximally stable extremal regions. So um, the authors apply watershed algorithm across this, and they basically select regions which are uh, stable over a large parameter range. So what they do is basically take a lot of different um, uh, Gaussian kernel sizes and they choose particular regions which have uh, a stable response and not necessarily uh, th in those reasons regions are not necessarily corners uh, as we can see here on the left and the right images these are two different um, these are images of the same uh, content with taken from different perspectives and therefore we have uh, a bit different uh, scaled versions of the same uh, content so for example here i you can see that it's a circular form here it's a bit of an ellipse and these detections are not exactly corners but they are continuous regions which have a, a stable response a very good uh, maximum uh, across different scales and therefore these regions are detected across uh, different images and this is a bit better um, feature detector in terms of uh, regions so if you are not focused on extracting the um, corners or edges uh, this maximally stable extremal regions is a good method to uh, find different regions of particular images that stay um, because they stay stable over a large parameter range that's the advantage of uh, this MSER so when we take a review we have seen three uh, main three main different um, detectors basically Harris detector the difference of Gaussian detector which was uh, an approximation of Laplacian of Gaussian kernel and uh, MSCR maximally stable extremal regions so these three have their advantages um, their, um, they have uh, their, they work better in particular uh, cases for example, Harris works good with corners, uh, DOG works with blobs as we saw, blobs were the regions which were approximated by the Gaussian kernels and MSER works uh, very good where there are stable regions basically. So uh, how do we choose an interest point detector? What's, what's, the, um, what's the logic behind it? What's the reason? Uh, why would you choose one over the other? So basically the more number of points or more feature detector features are detected in one image across or across images, the better for you. Uh, the better uh, because it becomes easier to match these uh, feature points across uh, different views and then you can um, basically you solve the, po uh, the problem of correspondences, right? So the more uh, points are detected, uh, the better uh, matches will be available. It's uh, as simple as that. Um, a why to detect the these interest points is basically uh, dependent on the application. So if you are uh, focusing more on uh, precise location of your uh, interest points, uh, Harris is good because it, it detects exact X and Y location of the corners. Have, whereas if you want to have a good localization in terms of scales, but you are okay or you're flexible about the exact location, if it's um, a blob is, is fine with you, then uh, difference of Gaussian is a better choice as we saw before. Uh, the example of um, the output of uh, difference of Gaussians here. So if you are not, um, so this, these regions are uh, marked um, with the circles. Uh, whereas in case of uh, MSER, the region shape is uh, flexible as we saw here. So we, we see that the regions are not either blobs or corners. They are, they, they could be, they are unconstrained. So uh, the way Max MSER works, it can take up uh, different uh, uh, regions of different sizes, and that's the it's um, that's its um, uh, advantage of uh, MSER using MSER. 
um, as I said, and I have been repeating this um, quite a while now, that it all depends on the kind of application you are working with. Um, however, we uh, we have seen that uh, research has so shown that Harris or uh, difference of Gaussian uh, feature detectors, they work well with uh, natural categories. Um, when you think about it, you can imagine why it, this is so. Um, because in natural categories um, or natural images, um, it's not easy to find um, regions. It's easier to find corners and it's easier to find finer scale features. And it also matters that um, uh, these features, uh, 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 it is also possible that these features are present in different scales and therefore DOG and Harris work better with natural categories whereas MSER works well for buildings and printed things. It's also easy to imagine why this is the case because the regions are, uh, so MSER works well with regions and buildings and printed things have uh, um, regions which uh, are good feature detect, uh, uh, good interest points across different scales. And, and if you want to have a look at more extensive extensive evaluations or comparisons, you can look at these two um, very interesting papers by uh, by the author uh, published in two different journals. These are a very high impact journal. So during that time, this was a very good uh, publication. So if you want to take a look at uh, the state of the art during 2005, you can take a look at uh, these two publications. Um, this table shows basically an overview of different feature detectors, which is uh, feature detectors can be used in conjunctions uh, with an, an, uh, other feature detectors as well. Uh, we have already studied Harris uh, DOG as well as MSER, and there are different combination of Harris and Laplace and Harris and Affine and edge based and uh, a lot of different combinations. Uh, these are different type of feature detectors and um, what these feature detectors are skilled at or more capable of is uh, mentioned here. Either they are uh, good with corners or blobs or with regions. As we saw, Harris is good with corners. DOG is good with uh, blobs specifically, but also uh, corners is uh, works well for DOG. As we saw in the case of the small i, where uh, the blobs were detected across different scales also. Uh, I is, I is, um, have this uh, corner in them uh, and therefore it was working good as well mm, not as good for other region uh, other blobs but it was okay -ish. and for MSCR we saw clearly that uh, the regions that were uh, the interest points are not uh, corners or they are uh, neither they are um, edges or anything they are these uh, regions and therefore um, this table shows uh, where these feature detectors are good at um, whether are these detector rotation invariant, scale invariant or a fine invariant, I mean um, depending on your application again, if you have uh, a particular requirement that you want the features to be scale invariant as well as affine invariant, uh, you can look at MSCR if you are not too much constrained with the exact location of your interest point. And uh, the localization accuracy, repeatability, robustness and efficiency is, uh, is shown here. Um, with different authors giving it different um, uh, stars, if you wa might want to call it. Uh, so this is this is a basically a, a very good comparison of different um, uh, key point detectors. And that's it for um, for this lecture, uh, for this part of the key feature detect descriptors uh, lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to start talking about uh, scale invariant feature transform, a very good. Uh, algorithm which has which was a which has been a very good state of the art uh, for uh, almost a decade and um, until then uh, see you bye